Hello YouTube. Today I thought I'd do a short programming tutorial. Actually, it's not going to be that short, but it's a basic programming tutorial on how to find the angle between two vectors using the program functions of the HP35S. Now, you could easily do this by hand. It's a simple equation. Um, I mean, it looks it looks a little bit involved, but really it's not too bad. Um, I already have some notes written down here, which you'll see in a minute. But it's just the arc cosine of uh, the x components plus the y components plus the z components products and the roots and squared of the m magnitudes multiplied together. Well, I mean, just the magnitudes multiplied together and the root of that. Uh, the, you know, inverse cosine of the whole thing. So, if you don't want to have to plug in and, you know, actually calculate, type all this out every time you want to do it, you could write a program to do it. And I'm assuming since you're watch, watching this video, you have an HP 35S. And if you don't, it's a great calculator, definitely go get one. And uh, I'll put up a tutorial on how to use RPN a little later. In fact, this one might go up afterwards. I'm not sure. Anyway, let's begin. So, you're going to start off with your calculator looking something like this, you know, just in the home mode. You're going to want to enter program mode first. So, let's enter the program mode by hitting blue button and then run stop. R slash S stands for run stop and that's the program mode. So, now we're in program mode. What you want to do first is label your program. So I'm going to label it A. You hit the blue button and then XEQ. You can see the little label there. LBL and then A is the red letter underneath the run stop key. And that will tell the calculator what to execute. You can execute a specific program from a specific line number uh, and it's very useful to label your program. So definitely just do that uh, without question. Now that you can't ask me questions in the comments. Anyway, let's continue. So, instead of putting in U1, U2, V1, V2, we got to put in single letter variables because the calculator can only handle single lettered variable names. So, we're going to call the X, Y, and Z components of vector 1, A, B, and C, respectively, and the X, Y, and Z components of vector 2, D, E, and F, respectively, as I have here. And the calculator is going to ask for the user to input these sequentially. How do you ask for input? Simple. Use the input function. Input. It's uh, the, the yellow button plus input, uh, which is on the X and Y switch register key, and we're going to want to input variable A, B, all the way through F. So, oops. All right, there we go. So now it has all of the vectors, components in memory. The first thing we want to do is multiply A and D together. And B and E together and then add them and then C and F and then add that. So let's do that. In order to recall a variable from memory, you hit the recall button, which is RCL. And you recall A and D and we multiply them together. And then we recall B and E, multiply those together and then add the products. And then recall C and F, multiply them together and add that to the previous two products. Now we have the numerator. So now we need to get the denominator. And it's simple. It, well, it's similar, yeah. Also simple. Um, we're going to take a squared plus b squared plus c squared, and then d squared plus e squared plus f squared, and then multiply those products, um, those sums together. And then take the square root of that. Then we'll have the denominator, we'll have the numerator, and we can divide them, and then take the arc cosine. So let's do that. First, we take a. Recall A, square it. And then recall B, square that, and add them. And then we recall C, square that, add that. So now we have the first sum in memory. Now we go to the second vector. Recall D, square it. Recall E, square that, add them. Recall F, square that, add them again. Now we have both sums in memory, and all we have to do is multiply them together. And now, 
we want to take the square root of that whole thing. Now we have the denominator. So we have the numerator on top, denominator on the bottom. What to do but multiply, oh, uh, <laughs> divide. Divide them to you, by each other. Now we have the inside of this whole thing and all we got to do is take the arc cosine. Now I want to tell the program to stop because it's done. So you hit the run stop key and that'll exit program mode. This is important to do at the end of your program because otherwise it'll keep stepping through all the other program steps in memory. Say for example I have another program B. Let me label B and I have like six times or something. If I don't tell it to stop the program when it's done, it'll start going through B as well. And I don't want that to happen. So let's clear that out here. Okay, so it'll, it, we have run stop. And now we're done with the program. So we hit the blue button to exit program mode. You hit the run stop key. Blue plus run stop is PRGM mode. And now let's run it. So I have two angles here, oh, well, two vectors, 110 and 111. You can take these in any order because the angle is going to be the angle no matter what. And the answer is going to be 35.2 degrees approximately because, you know, engineering three sig figs is all you need. So, well, I mean, for, for basic mad C stuff, not like rocket engineering or aeronautical engineering then you would need four decimals, but that's besides the point. Let's run this thing. So you hit the run stop key, or you can hit the run stop key if you want to step through all the program steps that you have from the point at which you exited program mode. So if I hit run stop from here, it'll just run that, and then it'll step through again. We want to execute from A001, <coughs> label A001. That's why we label our program. So we hit execute, XEQ, and then A. If you want to start from the beginning, all you have to do is hit enter here and it automatically filled in 001 as you saw. So vector A is going to be 1, well value A is going to be 1, value B is also going to be 1, value C is 0. I'm just keying these in again, but you know, they're already there in memory as you can see. Run stop. And as you can see, we got our answer. It's actually 35.3, I miswrote it. Um, in order to verify that we got this right, let's turn to the trusty TI-89. Now the decimal places are going to be different because I have this set to fix um, 6, as you can see there. But let's turn this beast on so we can actually verify that it's correct. Okay, so as you can see, I've already done this because it takes a while to key in. But it's cosine inverse of, and yes, you can't really see both of those at the same time, so I'm just going to, yeah. So. There is your proof that it's correct. This is, says uh, 35.264389, 6, blah, blah, blah. 35.264389, but since it's rounded, it says 90. But there you go. That's how you program a basic function into your calculator. Now, this was a kind of a long equation, but, you know, it saves you a lot of time. So, 10 minutes here of me explaining it will probably equate to you maybe spending two minutes typing it in. But if you have like five or six angles that you need to take, then it saves you a lot of time in punching all that stuff in multiple times. Please let me know in the comments below if you like this video and um, if you'd like to see more like it. Thanks for watching. This has been another Super V-Power calculator video. And I'll see you in the next one. Till then.